Founders Day was started as an annual affair to honor the great vision of DU's founder, John Evans, a pioneer, statesman, educator, and governor of the Territory of Colorado. According to an article that appeared in a 1929 version of The Pioneer, the goal of the Founders Day banquet is to celebrate the years of great growth and development, to recall the history and romance woven in them, to honor our founder, our administrators, our faculty, and our friends. The committee in charge promised a fine six-course dinner with all the trimmings, programs, and favors for the modest sum of $1.50. <laughs> While the price of the dinner has, well, increased throughout the university's history, the goal of celebrating progress and honoring those who have helped us achieve greatness will always be the cornerstone of this event. Let's take a moment to reflect on some of the life and times of the university over the course of our history from the perspective of alumni and students as performed by our own DU students. The years 1864 through 1884, even though the state of Colorado had not yet been formed, the university opens and John Hip is our first graduate. I, John Hip, proudly stand before you today as the first graduate of the University of Denver. 20 years ago, the university started with but humble beginnings. Erected near Governor, Governor John Evans' home on 14th Street was another, was another, was another... <laughs> modest house. Was another modest house, thank you was another modest house founded in 1864, the origin of the university. Upon graduating from East, East Denver High School in 1880, I set my sights on a Bachelor of Arts degree and a professional career to help me spread my passions of education and law onto the students. From that point on, I figured out that <laughs> It's hard to believe that four short years ago, I was working as a janitor. And now, today, I can proudly shout, hip hip hurrah, for I'm a University of Denver graduate and a future faculty member. Thank you, John, thank you. 1925, our first homecoming celebration. Homecoming is a glorious three-day period and a time for alumni to return and participate in celebrations. Saturday afternoon brings the big football game, a parade of floats between halves, and the annual chariot race between Beta Theta Pi and Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternities. <laughs> Two big, husky, nimble-footed members from each frat attempt to bring glory and laud to their frat by winning the race. Usually more than one spill ensues as the members attempt to drag the two-wheeled chariot around the cinder track in nothing flat. The freshman and sophomore classes will be battling for supremacy and the right to remove our dinkies or beanies. To or in order to remove the dinky before homecoming, instead of at Christmas, we have to defeat the sophomores in two out of the three class fights. The potato race, the homecoming day tug of war, and the flag rush. If we win, we burn an effigy of the dink at the football game. <laughs> 1958, our hockey team wins its first NCAA championship. At the beginning of the season, I believe we were ready. The boys had regained a fine edge again. The passing was good. They were setting up the defensemen for good shots. 
It was heartening news for our fans after we had come back for a, from a midseason slump for an impressive double win over the Edmonton Oil Kings in preparation for a tough series with Colorado College. <laughs> but the rest is well known. Probably everyone is aware that the trophy, emblematic of supremacy in the national hockey ranks, sure looks pretty gleaming from our trophy case. What a comeback. That's the mark of a champion. Thank you, Coach. 1967, Martin Luther King Jr. speaks on DU's campus. I, along with nearly 2,000 others, was lucky to be party to Dr. Martin Luther King as he spoke in the Denver Arena on the future of integration. He pointed out that no section of this country can boast of clean hands in the administration of their racial justice. America has never solidly committed to integration. Many of us stand with Dr. King in a future of true integration, but he also spoke of the dissenters. He remarked that there are many people who object to legislative attempts at solving civil rights problems. They argue that true integration is a matter of morality and the heart. King said he agrees. I am in the heart-changing business but if morality cannot be legislated, behavior can be regulated. Nineteen seventy, student protests and Woodstock West. I am proud to announce that student leaders from colleges around Colorado, including many of us from DU, have announced plans for a statewide action protesting against the extension of the Vietnam War into Cambodia. Our statement of policy calls for a renewal of our dissatisfaction. We're calling for students throughout the state to stop business as usual, to express our desire to an end of all United States involvement in Southeast Asia. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday will be set aside as days of reflection of concern about the war and to mourn the deaths of the four students killed at Kent State University. There will be a march for peace on Saturday at 12 noon that will assemble at the Federal Building and march to the State Capitol where a program of speakers will address the marchers. In case some of you are curious, he actually became the man. <laughs> the era between 1970 and 2012 was a pivotal time for the university. After DU survived serious financial threats in the 1980s, the Board of Trustees appointed Dan Ritchie as Chancellor to bring new vision and momentum. <laughs> Under Dan's leadership, DU entered a truly remarkable period of transformation that has continued under Chancellor Kuhn, resulting in the construction of 19 new buildings representing $570 million in major improvements to the DU campus. During this same time, academic programs have flourished and the university has expanded its connection to the greater world through programs such as its Bridges to the Future Lecture Series, achieving DU's vision of being a great private university dedicated to the public good. <clears throat> 2012, the presidential debate. Denver and the state will once again be in the political spotlight as we are excited to announce that the first presidential debate of the 2012 election will be held on the University of Denver campus. 
It's the first time Colorado has held a presidential debate, which is expected to bring in an estimated 3,000 media members from around the world. Colorado may play a key part in who is the next president of the United States, as Colorado is viewed as a swing state in the election. It's recognition that the road to the White House runs through Colorado. It's clear that over the last 150 years, DU has played an intimate role in not only shaping our state, but the nation. These stories, they represent our history, and they need to be told, and they need to be heard. So I'd like to invite you once again to share your own story about how DU has impacted your own life. You can share the story on the back of the seating map you received earlier this evening. We'll collect them as you exit the ballroom and share those memories throughout the sesquicentennial year. <laughs> it's the little things that add up to a big thing. Each and every one of your stories is critically important to DU. It is who we are. As a proud faculty member, I know that the university, in partnership with you, has set a course for continued advancement, provocative thinking, and a quest to improve the world around us. Collectively, the pioneer community is moving forward stronger than ever. Thank you for your involvement. You have played a significant role in all of our successes, the stories that have shaped who we are today and who we will be tomorrow. Thank you.